It's silly putty. <laughs> I need to adjust. What you doing? Well, oh, I think I forgot something. What up, Mini family? I have an exciting announcement at the end of the video, so stick around to hear it. Recently, Jazza, the YouTuber, reached out to me to do a collaboration. While we were throwing around ideas, he suggested, why don't we paint a model entirely with an airbrush? That's a pretty cool idea. I think that'd be an interesting challenge. Also, what if we painted a 75 millimeter display miniature? Well, that'd be a little bit harder, more model and more detail to paint, but we can make it work. Also, what if we painted it in only three hours? Uh, and now we're here, painting a 75 millimeter model with only an airbrush in three hours. Jesus, take the wheel. The rules for this challenge are that we paint the same model. We both do it exclusively with airbrushing and we both have three hours to do it. And the timer starts when you start airbrushing, which means you have all the time in the world beforehand to prepare, which is where I spent a lot of time. Obviously you wanna clean, assemble and gap fill your model. But in addition to that, I gave him a bubble bath to make sure all the little resin bits from cleaning were dislodged and any mold release that would mess up my airbrush stuff was cleaned off. Oh yes, yes, get into my pits, yes. I applied a magical Japanese substance to my airbrush to make it clog less. More on that in a future video. I cut out an oval MDF base for my Barbarian and applied dirt to the base. And also I came up with a paint plan with approximate timings for each step so I could make sure that I was on track. Once I had all those details squared away, I could start. But before we do that, let's take a look at our competitors. Coming in at six foot one at a weight of 175. He'll edge highlight until he goes blind. Paint until his hands go numb. It's Scott the Miniature Maniac. Entering the ring is his opponent. The Thunder from down under. His blue eyes will steal your girlfriend. He's good at literally any art form. It's Jazza. Okay, now we can start. All right, I have everything I could possibly need to get this three hour paint challenge underway. I got the model all based up. I have my various paints and inks. I have my paint plan. I have various stencils that I'm gonna use, thinners and cleaners, my mask, my gloves, and various masking materials. All that remains is for me to charge up my compressor and start blowing some air. <laughs> blowing some air. All right, my palms are pretty sweaty, so putting these on should be a joy. Oh yeah. You know, I don't even need a glove on this hand. This is the airbrushing hand. We're too far now. Why is this need to be recorded? Oh! I think the sweatbands are making me sweat more. Okay, so Jazza said technically that the timer started when I first started blowing the airbrush. So, I'm gonna prep my first paint first and then start blowing. Game in the system, baby! Let's do this. My first time saving technique was to skip priming and go straight into base coating with magenta. Primer has a lot of minor benefits, but for a display model like this that will largely go untouched, it's entirely unnecessary. Also, another time-saving technique that you may notice is that I'm painting the entire dang miniature the same color. I'm going to paint this guy like a spectral barbarian so I can get away with painting him all one striking gradient to distract you from my lack of effort. Is this a total cop-out? Yeah, kind of. Have some mercy on me. If I masked each part of this model and painted it in normal tones like skin tone, leathers, and metals, I'd maybe get through base coating each part. I'd rather have a cool, striking effect than do it the quote unquote right way and get nothing done. Once I had the magenta slapped on, I moved through a series of highlights, adding more and more opaque teal ink. I'll have all of the products I used linked in the description below. I find that acrylic ink applies more smoothly through an airbrush than paint, so I try to use it when I can. I applied my highlights from below as opposed to from above. Another devious technique to make you forget that what I'm doing is largely very simple. But also, it applies a more sinister ghostly vibe than doing a zenithal highlight. How are you doing so far? Well. Jazz has put the fear of God in me, and so I got some shakes right now, but it's looking okay. I had a little bit of dry tip issues, but we sorted that out real quick. So far, so good. 
Once I had finished highlighting with pure teal ink, I started to add in some white acrylic ink until I was using pure white acrylic ink. It's worth mentioning that while this ink is technically opaque, it applies translucently. So you can apply multiple layers of the same color and build up brightness. Once I had established my main gradient, I came in with translucent purple and magenta ink to reintroduce some fun purple tones. At this point, we were closing in on our first hour. All right, that's one hour in the bag. I got steps one through seven done out of 15, got eight more to go. I finished on a layer of varnish so I wouldn't wipe off paint on the model while I'm working on the rest of it because inks tend to be a little bit weak. I wonder at this point if Jazza actually tried to mask and paint this entire model in a normal way. One hour in, feeling pretty good. Time is, a, is still a, is a struggle. I remember the rule is you're only allowed to paint your model with the airbrush. There's nothing said about what we can stop the paint hitting the model with. So I've been using a fair bit of tape and blue tack because I'm not very good at their detail and accuracy. So. All right, let's keep going. <clears throat> All right, let's get the second hour started. Round two started with painting the base. It was a large enough feature to paint separately with little to no masking. I started with a navy blue and then added progressively brighter and brighter seafoam green highlights. Later on, I'll further tie the model to the base with the addition of more colors, but I'll wait until I'm using those colors on other parts of the mini so I'm being efficient with my color swaps. It then came to the masking part, but... Oh, I think I forgot something. Despite all my planning, I forgot a piece of simple paper for masking. I did it. I started by applying the modeling latex to around his face, except for his eyes. I applied it very thickly. The thicker it is, the more easily it will come off. Then, while that was drying, I moved on to applying these lightning bolt masks I got from Custom Stencils. They are super low tack, which means they won't remove paint, but also they have a very hard time sticking to a somewhat irregular surface. At the end of the day, I came to terms with the fact that the image wouldn't be super sharp, and that's okay. I did lightning on the axe and a little fire emblem on his stomach. Once I had that all in place, I hit the masked areas with some white ink for starters, and then a super saturated lime green ink. The initial white helps to more quickly boost the brightness of this green. Once that was done, it was time for the moment of truth, removing the masks. Despite not getting full contact with the masks, both the stomach flames and the lightning axe looked pretty great. Amazingly, the model latex came off of his face in one piece. <laughs> that worked so nicely. <laughs> and the eyes were nice and green. And by then, the second hour was coming to a close. Well, the second hour was totally consumed by applying super annoying masks, but at the end of the day, it worked out pretty nicely. What I'll be doing in the third hour is just fixing up some of the areas where I missed masking and I got white everywhere and just adding some special effects to distract you from the fact that I'm not actually painting this model in a good way. Wish me luck. Good luck. <laughs> I don't know how you're feeling after two hours, but I keep forgetting to breathe. So I'm feeling pretty lightheaded, to be honest. Maybe it's the fumes. These are water-based, right? Ah, the intensity is too intense. That's what this is all about. Hour three, Scott. I'll see you on the other side. In round three, I made a lot of minor corrections, adding some magenta here and there, adding some teal, etc. I was actually in a good position with my paint plan, so I afforded some time to kind of mess around a little bit. So I busted out some blood effects that I planned to spray onto the axe and other various parts. Normally, I get some blood effects on a paintbrush and then spray it off with the airbrush, just using a burst of air. But I wanted to limit the amount of times I used a paintbrush for an airbrush adjacent purpose, so I got the blood on my finger and tried to blow it off, but it wasn't working so well, so I kept forcing it until I got a massive blood chunk on my axe. Now in this scenario, do you think I A, take the L and just keep the blood chunk as is, or B, try to fix the problem by airbrushing it more, spreading it around, but ultimately totally ruining the face of the axe? Let's find out. <laughs> What you doing? Well, I tried to get fancy with some blood effects, and then I got a giant glob of blood on my finished axe. I don't have any of these left, so I'm picking it out of the trash to see if I can redo it. Do you know how much time is left? Uh, 20 minutes? Let's hope this works. With my time running out, I tried to reapply the lightning bolts in the same way as I had before, and it looked 
okay. I have no idea why I decided to do this at the last minute and on the side of the axe that actually looked okay. The time must have gotten in my head. Speaking of, where are we? Ooh, my compressor is so hot. That is three hours of airbrushing complete. After the third hour, I can indeed confirm that the sweatpants made things worse. This is what I could accomplish in three hours, Jazza. How'd you do? Scott, I'm gonna be honest, I feel pretty good about my result. Dude, this was a lot of fun, but all I gotta say is the, let the voters decide. Cause, uh, and we're still, are we, are we maintaining the whole like combative? I don't know, I really like you, Scott, I'm a big fan. Thanks for making cool videos. Anyways, back to you, Scott. Here's my three hour airbrush exclusive 75 millimeter display mini result. This collaboration challenged me in more ways than I expected. First, obviously the challenge was physically difficult to complete, but the real learning came from my impression of how things need to be. To me, large display minis need to be painted in a certain way. In fact, they deserve it. You need to labor over them until you virtually don't enjoy painting it anymore. That sounds awful when I say it out loud. I'm gonna paint a large mini just like I paint a small one, however I want. And while it probably won't be just like the miniature in this video, it'll be inspired by the notion that not everything needs to be flawless, even display minis. If you guys don't know who Jazza is, he runs an art-centric YouTube channel at over 5 million subscribers that focuses on the love of art, demonstrating things like illustrations, sculpting, painting, and everything. He does everything well. Everything well. You think I was gonna do this video and not do one Australian accent? His skills are varied, his videos are fun to watch, and lately he's been getting into miniatures. His video about making a painting case was awesome. I'll have it linked below along with this channel. Go check out his videos and subscribe. He's an awesome artist, content creator, and person. Time for that announcement. A long time ago, I used to fulfill my own merchandise, but that took a lot of effort, so I moved over to Teespring. And while that makes selling merch a heck of a lot easier, it comes at a cost. So, I'm happy to say today that we are back to fulfilling our own merch, which means quality control, we can sell whatever we want, and we can also sell it all under the same website. To celebrate that, I'm selling a t-shirt that depicts a well-known sci-fi character that I'm not particularly fond of, decapitated and bleeding the words, paint more minis. Along with that, all the old merch that was on Teespring is discounted 20% until June 19th at midnight, about a week. And we're also tossing in a little mini patch along with all orders. No, this isn't the big patch that I sell, it's a little bit of a smaller one. We also have some new merchandise, like a big cool Miniac patch, an enamel metallic pin, and a sticker pack. Along with that, the Duchess, the vampire model that I sell, is back in stock, so if you're waiting for it to come back, Now's the time to buy it, along with the digital course, if you want to. That's gonna do it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed the challenge. I'm looking forward to doing more things similar to this to kind of expand what I think of miniature painting as a whole. Subscribe or die! And most importantly, don't forget to paint my miniature!